from a mistake that every noob makes to something that even the pros get wrong. These are 90 mistakes that you should never make in blocks fruit. I never stored any of my fruits in the beginning because they were so cheap and easy to obtain. But when I reached the third C, I still never stored any of my fruits until one player killed me when I had leopard in my hand. I ended up losing that fruit, but since that day, I always store my fruits no matter if it's a Kilo or a Buddha. This is one of the most stupid mistakes players make. It's leaving a game with items, and I'm not talking about swords or guns that stay once you join back. I'm talking about fruits, keys, and any other items that disappear once you leave the game. That's another reason why you should always store your fruits. You probably already know that combat fighting style is the style you get when you first join the game, and what you should never do is stick to it. Literally any other fighting style is better than combat. For example, you can get a dark step for relatively cheap as a beginner, which is far better than combat. The only reason why people decide to stick to combat is because once you switch it for another fighting style, you can never retrieve it. So it's a flex to still have a combat and be at max level. But believe me, not switching your fighting style will slow down your leveling up process. There are some pretty useless items in blocks fruits, such as usopes, hat, or barriers. But did you know that guns are literally useless too? There is absolutely no gun that will win in a fight against a solid fruit. So yeah, just stay away from guns and don't pretend to be usop from One Piece. Prank your friends who are new to the game by pretending to be an NPC. PC. This one won't work on experienced players, but if you make your outfit look like one of these monkey NPCs, new players might get confused when they can't kill you easily. Just be careful since your name tag will still be visible. If somebody gets suspicious, kill them quickly. This next prank could get you banned, so be careful. Challenge your friend to a dance competition, and then once it's your turn, start doing this. To do this, you must first equip a katana, then open the inventory and click the katana and hold the Z skill, and then release the skill and click the unequip button super fast. Doing this will result in some suspicious behaviors. One of the oldest tricks in the book is super easy to do. When your friend is grinding, just follow them around. Once they get an enemy down to low HP, use your best weapon to one-shot it, stealing their kill. Try using this weird boat glitch to dunk your friends into the water. If your friend is AFK in their boat, try pushing it out from under them. Sometimes the boat will move, but the player will stay completely still. This causes them to fall into the water, and when they get back to their computer, they'll be in for a splashy surprise. If you don't have enough Robux to buy a speedboat, and you don't have any friends that can give you some, don't worry because you can just make your regular boat slightly faster, with the help of an auto clicker. Just activate the auto clicker and let it spam while you're riding a boat. This will speed you up a little bit, and I guess it's better than nothing. I bet you didn't know that you can get into the awakening room through the cafe. Once you're in the cafe, head downstairs and stand in the right corner, the one across the frog room. You'll need Buddha for this one. Once you're in that corner, Corner, flash step through the wall and shift into Buddha. Now find your way to the awakening room and simply flash step inside. The menu will pop up if you try to awaken your fruit, but the game will just say you cannot talk to this NPC. Combining two fruits and blocks fruits is usually impossible, but there's a glitch that allows you to combine Buddha and Falcon. First equip Falcon, and then simply equip Buddha. Once you transform into the Buddha, you'll keep Falcon's wings and more importantly, its ability to jump extremely high. When you combine Falcon's jump with Buddha's size, you'll be able to jump way higher. I'm sure some of you already know about this one. It's pretty famous. You can glitch your sword to be 10 times bigger than your character. While you're untransforming from Buddha, quickly equip your sword and just take a look at how big it is. It is useful as you can hit much larger while still being a small target. It gives you the normal hitbox of a Buddha user. Everyone knows that using cheats will get you banned, but did you know that you can get banned even if you use cheats on a private server? Even if you're the only one playing that server, you can still get banned. And if you use cheats back in 2021, but you don't use it anymore, admins can actually still ban you if they ever come across any proof that you did it. This glitch will definitely get you banned if the admin catches you using it. It's called the invisible glitch and it's easy to execute. All you need to do is get a portal fruit, press X, and stand still. Once the ability turns off, you will remain invisible as long as you don't move. There's so many ways to prank people with this one, but unfortunately it's not allowed. Next time someone kills you five times in a row, think again before cussing them out in chat. This can easily get you banned and it's definitely not worth it. For every swear where an admin catches you saying, you will receive one warning. Once you get 15 warnings, you will be banned. Wait, does this mean I can swear 14 times without getting banned? Some insane glitches are completely allowed, but this one is bannable, and I'll explain why. This glitch makes you way too fast. All you need to do is get a spirit fruit, and spam click while the spirits are on the blue side. Then switch to another fruit, and you will notice a slight change in your speed. But if you repeat this a couple of times, you will become way too fast. Glitches like this one aren't actually bannable, but if the admin catches you speeding around, you'll have no proof that you're only glitching, and he'll think you're cheating and will get you banned. I think I'd rather just use Buddha. Oxfruit's map is pretty large, and new players tend to have a hard 
time finding the next locations they should visit. But that's because they don't listen to the compass. Compass is literally your best friend in Blocks Fruits. And yet, I often see players completely forgetting about it. You can find your compass on the left side of your screen, and it basically tells you where the next NPC you should visit is located, or where your next quest is. All you need to do is hop in a boat, and travel in the direction the red needle is pointing towards. New players, listen up! If you have a fruit equipped, and you eat another one, you will end up losing the fruit you had previously equipped. It's impossible to retrieve it, and the only way to get an infinite amount of fruit is to buy a permanent fruit add-on. I didn't know this, and I ended up losing a fruit when I was a newbie, which cost me some time. This next one is a mistake I see a lot of people making. Not setting your spawn point. I know you hate dying on the island where you're grinding, and then getting respawned at a whole other island that's miles away from your task. Because of this, setting your spawn point is something you should always keep doing because it saves you so much time. It instantly spawns you exactly where you need to be, so you won't have to travel to that place anymore. I often see new players trying to level up by grinding at the same island. There are cases where players literally get from level 10 to level 200 just by grinding on the jungle island, and this is something you should definitely stay away from. Not only is it a rookie mistake, but players actually think they will level up faster because it's easier to kill enemies, and they can get more kills in a shorter time. Just because it's way harder to kill the enemies at the same level as you doesn't mean you will level up slower, and in fact you'll actually level up much quicker. Everyone knows that Buddha is the most overpowered fruit in the game, but it's not just helpful for grinding or killing bosses, you can use it to destroy your friends too. I'm not exactly sure why you would want to be so cruel, but this will definitely be a prank your friend won't forget. For a more friendly prank, try hiding a fruit in plain sight. Ice fruit is almost the exact same color as this raid portal, so if you drop one inside the portal, it's almost invisible. Tell your friend that you've hidden a fruit somewhere in the room, and watch as they pace around furiously, unable to find it at all. Roblox Fruits players love to flex their bounty on others, so try ruining your friend's day by taking away their bounty. When they're busy grinding, jump them when they least expect it. They'll have no idea how to react, and you'll probably win the fight. Just make sure to be careful who you do this to, some friends might not be so forgiving. This next one only works if you have Electric Claw at 250 plus mastery. If you do, hold Electric Claw X on your friend, face the air, and then release. This will toss your friend sky high. Don't know that with Love's Flamingo Ride ability, you're able to pick up NPCs and move them around the server. It's not really a useful glitch, but it's definitely fun. One thing you can do with this glitch is prank new players by picking up high level NPCs and transporting them over to lower level islands. An NPC at this level will end up killing every new player that stands in its path. This one is an absolute game changer. If you need a quick way to get out of a heated situation, remember this. Jump plus right click and dash. This glitch will send you flying into the sky and give you enough time and space to escape the fight. Just make sure you get some practice before trying it out in the fight. If you're a new player, this glitch will completely transform the way you play. I'm talking about the good old wall glitch that allows you to go through any wall just by standing in front of it and using flash step. You may have to play around with the camera angle until you get some practice, but it's really simple. And you can also use any teleportation moves like Dark F and so on. Subscribe if you already knew this one. This one is for a little more experienced glitch exploiters. It's the cursed ship glitch. You'll need to go to the spot where the ship stewards are. Once you're there, use the Ren Goku Z move or any other rush move next to the ship stewards while they're barely moving. You'll wind up right under the floor. If an admin ever catches you doing something that's causing the server to lag, you will receive a warning. But the next time the admin catches you doing the same thing, you can say bye bye to your account because you're definitely getting banned. Just how any other type of bad speech isn't tolerated, threatening isn't too. If you ever threaten someone to harm them in game or even worse in real life, you will get banned. I once threatened my friend that I'll come over to his house and trash his PC. And guess what? I got banned. I'm kidding, obviously. We all know I don't have any friends. I know there are Foam Blocks Fruits players watching this video, so here's something for you guys too. Roller Donut ability from the Dough Fruit will get you glitched so much you'll end up being teleported far away. I don't know how this glitch isn't more known since it happens to Foam players all the time, but why is it bannable? Because not only it does this, but it also sometimes makes the player fly. Admins don't want to hear any excuses once they see you levitating in the air. Buckle up, this is a really weird one. Did you know that if you pick up a fruit a player is standing on, you'll get banned? What? How? There's this glitch that shows a player picking up the fruit another player is standing on. And as he picks it up, the other player literally disappears. I think he went into his inventory. If you're a completely new player without any knowledge in Blocks Fruits, I recommend you do some research before buying your first fruit. I know that once you open the fruit dealer menu for the first time, you'll feel like you absolutely have to buy a fruit, and you'll probably spend your money on a bad and useless fruit. Instead of doing this, do some research and wait for a good fruit. This will speed up your leveling process so much. 
much. Many people used to choose a melee instead of a fruit in the first seed, which is reasonable, but it's still a mistake. Instead of melee, you should get yourself an elemental fruit, which is way better. With an elemental fruit, you will be able to dodge an enemy's attack if you surpass their level, and I think that's a great advantage for new players. The biggest mistake you can make is when just getting to the second C immediately heading over to start a raid. I understand you can't wait to get in a raid, but believe me when you just get to the second C from the first C, raids are going to be way more difficult than you expect, and you probably won't make it. Continue to grind for some time before starting a raid. This way you'll be absolutely sure to win your first raid. Also, don't awaken useless fruits. Just awaken only fruits you're sure you'll be able to use in the future. If you've got a bit of spare Robux, it would be a good idea to buy some add-ons. Some of the best add-ons you can buy in Blocks Fruits are definitely double money and double mastery, but you have to be careful when buying add-ons, because there are some bad ones I see people buying such as Fast Boats, Double Drop Chance, and even Dark Blade. Alright, Dark Blade isn't that bad if you really want it, and I can't tell you what to spend your money on. That's just my advice. Another sneaky way to annoy your friend is to copy which fruits they use. Challenge them to help you defeat a difficult boss, wait for them to pick a fruit, and then use the exact same one. At first, they'll think nothing of it, but after a few more times, they'll be suspicious. Do it again, and they're surely going to notice. This one is harmless. Well, that is unless it causes you both to die to the boss. But what if you want to confuse your friends? Try this glitch out that can be found in the second scene. If you walk over beside the cafe, you will see a glitch in the ground where there's a tiny gap. Use your flash step to teleport right through the ground. This will confuse your friend, and you can use it if you ever need a quick getaway. Just be careful not to drown in the water. This next one will make you super rich. Challenge your friend to see who can find more chests. Then, make sure they aren't following you. And head over to Sky Island. If you make your way to the temple and go through the secret entrance, you will find billions of chests. Okay, maybe not that many, but you'll definitely beat your friend and you'll gain infinite money in the process. If you've ever used the portal fruit, you know that it's one of the most useful fruits in the entire game. But it's not only good for teleporting you around, it can be used to prank your friends. If you stand super close to your friend and then activate the portal, your friend will get dragged into it with you. You can use this however you like and as many times as you like. Just be careful because the more you do this, the grumpier your friend will get. Only OG players know about this one. If you drive your boat onto land, it'll cause it to rapidly vibrate. If you touch the boat while it's vibrating, your character will get launched into the sky. You can also do this with the superhuman fighting style. You'll need a boat and superhuman sea ability. Hold the sea ability and sit in your boat. Release sea and direct the boat onto the land. You can also do it with barriers X ability using the exact same process. Take notes because this is one of the funniest glitches everyone forgets about. If you use the Dark Dagger Z or X move while sitting in the seat of the boat at the same time, then hitting your friend will sometimes cause them to be able to walk on air. And occasionally when you do this glitch, your friend will follow you as if he's tied to your boat. If you hold the Z move at the same time, as you sit in the passenger seat of a boat, the boat will become attached to the sword and then you can throw the boat at a player, causing you to teleport to the player with the boat on top of them. This counts as driving so you may even get some sea beasts to spawn. On top of all of this, if someone's coming at you in a boat, you can use the same moves to sit in another boat or even launch the player across the map. This is probably one of the craziest glitches out there, mostly because you can do it unexpectedly. If you hit your enemies with abilities that cause knockback or ragdoll, you can clip them into objects and walls. Just watch them have a complete breakdown. Now go out there and prank your friends with this one, but also be careful when fighting someone with a high knockback as they can hit you at a certain angle and cause you to endlessly fly away. I snuck in a Don Swan's mansion to look for my friends, then realized I didn't have any. But look what I found! If you enter his mansion and then go through the entrance to Don Swan's room while holding any move, you will be teleported to the Swan Pirates. Sometimes you might even get teleported into an underground location on Hot and Cold Island. You will see a lightly colored block with a tiny platform, get to the platform and flash step your way inside where you'll find an NPC. You won't be able to talk to him however. Did you know that you used to be able to get banned in Bloxford just by playing? Playing normally? Back in the day, the ban system worked so well that it banned every suspect. Many people reported they got banned for doing literally nothing, but thankfully the ban system is updated and nowadays it's way harder to get banned. But what if you want to go even further? Instead of getting banned, get your account deleted. If you ever scam anyone in Bloxfruits, your whole Roblox account will get deleted. I think this one is fair because I literally hate scammers. Subscribe if you hate them too. This one is 100% bannable. It's called the Frozen Quiet Rush Glitch, and it's most known as 
this is sus glitch. In order to do this, you need to get a katana. Open the inventory menu, hold Z skill, and then release the Z and click the unequip button at the same time. You must be super quick. But if you're wondering why it's called the sus glitch, see for yourself. This is by far the easiest method to get banned. Thousands of players get banned every single day because they clicked on a link some other player sent them. It's called phishing. People make a fake page where you have to log into your Roblox account. But it's actually just a bait that'll make you give them your account details. The player will use your account to cheat on it and have fun and probably get banned. So even if you successfully get your account back, you'll be banned on Blocks Fruits and there's no chance you're ever getting unbanned. Just don't click on any suspicious links. This next one will tremendously affect how fast you level up. I'm talking about choosing the right fruit for grinding. I see so many players using PvP fruits for grinding and they level up so slow. PvP should not be your priority unless you have maxed out your level. So I suggest you focus on leveling up as quickly as possible. The best way to do this is to use grinding fruits. Buddha and Awakened Magma are definitely some of the best grinding fruits out there. But in case you don't have them yet, do your research before you head out to grind next time. This is one of the most brutal mistakes I see new players making all the time. Stop upgrading your stats evenly! Why would you upgrade a stat for something you won't even use in the game? The right way to upgrade your stats is to focus on your health and energy, and then choose what you will use as your main, which is probably fruit. So then just upgrade your fruit stats. This way you won't miss out on anything, and you can always upgrade your other stats later. Most players go crazy when they find out they can find fruits sitting on the ground. But one important thing you should know is that it is extremely hard to find fruits if you're looking on purpose without a fruit notifier add-on. Most of us do find fruits randomly, and it's usually when we least expect it. There's just simply no point in searching for fruits without a notifier. You'll spend a lot of time and the chances you find anything will be super low. Waiting for a boss to respawn in the first sea is understandable, because first sea bosses respawn relatively fast, but waiting for a boss to respawn in a second or third sea isn't what you should do. Instead, after you kill a boss, just hop on another server where that boss will probably be waiting for you. This is something called server hopping, and it can be used for many things, even grinding. And if you're a new player, you might have never heard of it. Find a boss that gives you a lot of belly, and is pretty easy to kill. Then just server hop and repeat. You will earn a lot of money, level up, and maybe even get a fruit. I wonder how many of you wait for the boss to respawn. Comment down below if you do that. Some players still don't know that you can switch your fruits instantly, just by clicking on the shop button. From here, you can select any permanent fruit you want, as long as you've already bought it. Use this to troll your friends by jumping straight into lava or water, and then at the very last second, switching to a magma fruit. Your friend will be so confused since you didn't have it equipped when you jumped, and they'll think that you're some sort of god. Take this a step further by pretending to accidentally fall in, and then still being completely unharmed. Everyone loves to compare their bounty to their friends, so why not prank your friends by increasing yours? If you go to this hidden island on the first sea, you will find the mob leader. Every time you kill him, you will gain 3,000 bounty. This may not sound like a lot, but you can kill him in just a few swings, and he respawns every minute. This means that you can increase your bounty by well over 100,000 every single hour. Do this for long enough, and your friends will stare in awe as you tower over them with your huge bounty. Prank your friends by becoming invincible to sword attacks. It's actually pretty easy to do this. All you need is a chop fruit. Most players think that the chop fruit is one of the worst fruits in the entire game, but it has a secret ability that lets you troll your friends. Using a chop fruit will make you completely immune to any sword attacks, so you can stand still as you get attacked by a pirate, while your friend freaks out, wondering how you aren't dead yet. Most players don't know that you can actually equip two fighting styles at the same time. If you want to blow your friend's mind, do this by equipping either the dark step or dead step fighting style, and make sure to have the final ability unlocked. Once you've done this, you can now use the overheat ability, which will set your legs on fire. Then just head over to an ability teacher and get the shark man or electric fighting style. Equip it and now you have double powers. If you use death step C move and talk to any fighting style dealer, you will end up spinning forever until you reset your character or die. And to make things even worse, you can't even move around, dash, flash step, or nothing else while you're spinning. This is how you can become the biggest player on the server. You'll 
still need an unawakened Poodle's transformation for this one. Once you've got it, awaken the Zemu, transform again, and you will have a big head. I already know that most of you don't know about this one. You'll need an awakened version of Buddha. Go to the Awakening Expert and unawaken your Buddha Zemu. Use the unawakened Buddha transform move, then go back to the Awakening Expert and awaken your Buddha Zemu again. Once again, use Buddha's awakened Zemu, and when you turn it off, your body will remain golden. And now you just look like a big minion. Did you know this? Comment down below. Becoming invincible in Blocks Fruits is a dream, and here's how you can do it. First, complete a raid with the fruit that the raid belongs to. When you come to the awakening room, use a flash step to teleport outside the box. Find stones on the side of the walls and flash step through the wall to the tunnel under the Kingdom of Rose. And that's it. You are now invincible until you reset or join. But at what cost? Well, you won't be able to damage other players or teleport home. I'm starting to think this one isn't as good as it sounds. We all hate when we run out of air jump, but luckily there's a glitch that will help you with this. Once you run out of air jumps, just use Leopard's X move. It'll regenerate all of your air jumps. People are saying this is bannable, but let's be real. How will the admin even find out? And if an admin's watching, I would never do something like that. When I say that auto clicker is allowed, I mean it. But you can't use it for AFK grinding anymore. I see more and more people complaining about getting banned after using an auto clicker to AFK grind. So I assume it's just not allowed anymore. You can still use the auto clicker, but if you do so, make sure you're not AFK. And when I think about it, it makes more sense because why would a game allow for people to make money and level up while they're sleeping? And the next one is Control Gamma Rush Glitch. A glitch that allows you to walk with your control area and even move it around. You need to set up your control room and hold Control V move for 10 seconds or more until you are able to move. And then there you go. I don't really see a point in this though. And why is it even bannable? You probably won't like this one if you have a bad internet connection. Back in the day, Bloxford's cheat detection was so sensitive it would often ban players just because they had bad ping. Imagine stressing out playing on a bad connection, getting banned, and then also stressing out because you just got banned. I wouldn't be able to stand that. Blocksmith is an NPC that allows you to upgrade your swords and guns, but I often see new players upgrading literally useless items such as katana or any kind of gun. This is a big no-no because you will spend your material upgrading items that you probably won't use in the future. Instead, you should save your materials and upgrade the items you know you'll stick to until reaching max level. A massive mistake new players make is not dashing while fighting. This is extremely important because it allows you to hit your enemy and then quickly dash away from them so they don't hit you. It'll be your friend because your defense stat is probably still low. And for someone like me, it's great because I don't have any friends. If you've watched some of my videos, you know how much I love Buddha and how OP it is. And this is actually one of the biggest mistakes players make. I'm talking about grinding without a Buddha fruit. There are some good grinding fruits out there such as Lighter Magma, but none of these can compare with Buddha at all. Its range and speed are truly a must have if you want to reach max level fast. Even though it costs 1.2 million belly or 1,650 fragments, I promise you that it will pay for itself in no time. But if you're still poor, ask your friend to buy it for you. That's exactly how I got my Buddha fruit. Yeah, I'm lying again. I don't have any friends. One of the most common things players do in Blocks Fruits is ignoring CBs. Most of you do this because you think they're too OP and impossible to kill. Sure, they are pretty difficult, but you shouldn't be ignoring them. And especially don't avoid them once you see them spawn. That's because they don't spawn very often. So once they spawn, you're literally missing out on a huge reward. A lot of belly, fragments, and even a chance of getting fruit or an accessory. A Fist of Darkness is valuable and it's just another reason why you shouldn't be avoiding CBs. Use this speed hack to troll your friends. Of course, I'm not actually going to use hacks, but it sure looks like I am. To do this, crank up your speed by equipping Pilot Helmet, Rabbit Race, and using Spirit Fruit to spawn pigs. Then quickly switch fruits and you'll be even faster. If you do this enough times, you'll be even faster than an Olympic sprinter. And if you do it correctly, you can actually move so fast that players will think you're teleporting. And you can use this to steal any fruits they drop in the blink of an eye. One of the best tricks you can do is simply pretending to be a noob. This one won't work on your friends, but it can help you make some new ones. Customize your character to look like a default noob, and then ask players to help you out. Some players might be toxic, so troll them by suddenly becoming overpowered and killing them. And if they're nice and actually help you for some reason, now you have a brand new friend. Just make sure not to slip up and reveal to them that you're not actually a noob, otherwise they'll feel betrayed and call you a liar. But what if you're like me and don't have any friends? Don't worry, you can just spawn your best friendo. He'll follow you around and pretend 
protect you at all costs. And you can even troll him by taking him with you as you hop on a flamingo and fly over the sea. You can even prank NPCs with this by spawning a flamingo with a love fruit while you're near them, and they'll get picked up and join you for the ride. If your friend is new to the game, prank them by lying about which fruits give you which abilities. Some fruits can be misleading, like magma fruit letting you walk on water. So tell your friend that sand fruit lets you do the same, and watch as they jump into water, only to be shocked as they take damage twice as fast as usual. This one's only half true however, as if you time your hops perfectly with a sand fruit on water, you'll take zero damage. This glitch is probably one of the most OP glitches in all of Blox Fruits. You'll first need to get a bow and have Phoenix's X ability on Awaken. Use the X ability and then go on the bow. You won't lose any energy when you are on the bow and it can stack. But keep in mind that this glitch sometimes glitches itself and can even glitch you out of the game. I just said glitch way too many times. Comment how many times I said it. Open up your avatar tab and make your avatar super small. This gives you a huge advantage in PvP since some moves are harder to hit due to the smaller hitbox. I don't even understand why you wouldn't want to do this. Me personally, I'll take functionality overlooks any day of the week. If having four people in a raid isn't already enough, here's how you can double that number. You need four people with Love Fruits F move, and then simply get two people on one flamingo. Just make sure to properly angle the flamingo in order to get into the raid. But once you do this, you're going to have the easiest raid in the entire world. You definitely didn't know that one. I bet you didn't know that if you hold Barrier Fruits X move or Dragon Fruits Z move before you teleport into the raid, you will be teleported all the way back to the raid's room or castle on the sea. There are some other moves that may also work, but I'm not going to tell you which ones. This would only work sometimes, so try it and let me know if it worked for you. Did you know that there's a way to make your head 10 times bigger in Blox Fruits? And it's bannable too. All you need to do is get your Buddha Fruit, head over to the Awakening Expert located in the mansion on the third sea, unawaken your Buddha, transform into Buddha, then talk to the Awakening Expert once again, awaken your Buddha and transform again. This time only your head will be transformed and you'll be walking around with a huge head. This looks around the size of my brain. Think twice before using this one in PvP. Giant Race allows you to become the size of an Awakened Buddha user and use a different fruit at the same time. But it also has some major issues itself, including getting banned if abused in PvP. In order to actually get banned, you need a permanent Buddha fruit and another permanent fruit of your choice. You'll also need to complete at least one Buddha raid because you will need a Z move for this one. Use Z move, open up a perma fruit shop, find your other permanent fruit, and while clicking on equip, immediately press Z again. Now you will have the abilities of two fruits. It's normal to see a lot of messages saying error, disable your transformation first, and don't worry about that. But you should definitely be worried about getting banned. Alright, so apparently there's this glitch with a catch developers make just to see if someone will try to use it in order to get a better fruit. I don't want you to get banned, so I can't tell you everything. But there's a code you'll need to write in the chat, and then roll a fruit. Hmm, will this work? Well, it definitely works, and now I'm definitely not going to share the code with you. And be careful next time you're typing in a code, because who knows, maybe you'll type in the wrong one. Did you know that you can get banned if you choose a bad name for your crew? While you're making a crew, make sure to choose a proper name for it, because I have seen leaders of crews getting banned just because of how they name their crew, even if it's not offensive at all. How would you name your crew if you couldn't get banned? Comment down below. Trust me, this one might save your life one day. A ghoul mask is a must-have rare item, and not having it is a massive mistake. This mask gives you the ability to gain health equivalent to a portion of the damage you deal with melee attacks known as life leech. When having it equipped, you'll gain health equivalent to 10% of your damage dealt to players and 2.5% against NPCs. On top of that, Cool Mask also gives you 35% more running speed and 500 energy. It's literally a must have. A super strange way to troll your friend is to activate an infinite do C move. You can do this by going to the remove blocks for NPC and activating do C move right as you click on the NPC. When the animation ends, you'll be stuck with what appears to be a massive arm. This doesn't really do much, but it looks completely glitched and will be sure to scare your friends. But what if your friend trusts you a little too much? Get them to try out this glitch. All you have to do is tell them to use any fruit and any move while jumping into the teleporter in the third C, and they will get a special surprise. They'll think that it takes them to some sort of secret location or gives them a reward, and will be so confused when it throws them off the map and into the sky. I'm not exactly sure how to help them get back safely. Find someone who's AFK in their boat, and simply push the boat out from under them. Their boat also might get submerged in the water. This is a great way to prank your friends, or to just confuse any AFK players. But this brand new Buddha
the glitch is even crazier. To do this, you'll need perm fruits, and not just any perm fruits. First, get your Buddha and equip it, and then open your fruit selection and spam click on control fruit. At first, it'll ask you to disable your transformation first, but if you spam it enough, it will simply equip control fruit. Now you're an absolute giant with control fruit. Nobody's gonna want to mess with you. I wish I knew this years ago. Did you know about this flight glitch that was so overpowered they removed it from the game? All you need to do is have chop fruit activated and turn on shift lock. Then activate your C move and switch to your sword as fast as possible. Once you've done this, you'll be able to fly just by spam pressing your spacebar and hitting A and D. That's insane. Do you want to send your opponent into a black hole? This is what you need to do. First, get an awakened Dark's World of Darkness move. Hold the move for at least 35 seconds or more. And when you release it, the ball will be above you forever. You can stack this forever. And when you finally release it, your opponent might be facing a real black hole. Now, if they report you, don't say it's my fault you got banned. You wouldn't believe how powerful Buddy Sword actually is. There's a Buddy Sword glitch that lets you auto aim enemies. To do this, you need to hold the X move and hold the minimize down to the screen. And then release everything at once. Now, your Buddy Sword will lock onto enemies, which is literally a cheat. This will easily get you banned if an admin sees you using it. And it will probably also get you reported. If you ever wanted to have infinite agility, this is what you should do. Get a Rabbit V3 and Barrier F move. First activate agility, then hold the Barrier F move and that's it. This will keep the speed boost from agility until you run out of energy or until you release Barrier's F move. Most players don't know that you can actually equip two fighting styles at the same time. If you want to blow your friend's mind, do this by equipping either the Dark Step or Dead Step fighting style and make sure to have the final ability unlocked. Once you've done this, you can now use the overheat ability, which will set your legs on fire. Then just head over to an ability teacher and get the shark man or electric fighting style. Equip it and now you have double powers.